Yeah, my full name is Makeda Teresa, M-A-K-E-D-A, but I like to go by Kida, which is K-E-D-A. So the exhibition is titled Adara Leje Adara Lejane. It's said twice because there's like a different meaning with both of them. It's kind of a saying that your my mom, for example, would say whenever I leave the house, and it just basically means like go with protection or to protect my child. There's four artists in the show. Um, all four artists are from the Horn of Africa. Um, so Nafer is a Somali artist, Somali American artist. Addis is a um, Ethiopian and Black American artist. Baraket is an artist from uh, the Southern People's Nations in Ethiopia, and then Elsa is also Ethiopian American. Um, exhibition is centered on the experiences of being like second gen immigrants. So first or second gen if you came here when you were young or if your parents are immigrants. Um, and there's an experience of like wanting to connect to a culture back home while also really trying to assimilate to like the environment that you're in. And so a lot of it is centered on like memory and nostalgia. Nostalgia is like, nostalgia is even like a feeling, like an emotion kind of in like many communities in the Horn of Africa, but especially Ethiopia. Um, and so yeah, the whole exhibition is really centered on just like that feeling of nostalgia or like going to a place or having memory for something that you want to remember, but maybe you don't even know what it's like really. Um, I was born and raised here. Some of the artists were also born and raised in the States. Um, and yeah, there's just like a kind of sense of loss of how do I connect to my family? How do I connect to my community while also assimilating and existing in this country? Yeah, right now I work at Public Functionary as an assistant, as a curator. Um, I used to be working here as a, a producer, assistant producer. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where I work. That's where we are right now. Back in 2021, I started a group with my two friends, Awa and Nardos, and it was called Reload It. And it was, honestly, it kind of just started really casually. We just wanted to have like parties and events and just like gatherings that were centered around like women and femme artists. Um, Awa is like a really talented photographer and now DJ. Nardos at the time was like DJing a lot. Um, and especially with like photography and DJ, those are like super like male dominated like art crafts. And so all the events we would go to just never were as like comfortable for us. And so we started Reloaded as just like a way to have like more events and things like that. And one of our first events was like an all female lineup. And we had like a live producer we had a live artist that was like painting on their ipad and it was like projected it was really sick and the original place that we wanted to have it at i don't remember what happened but it like fell through like a few days before the event was supposed to happen and awa had a connection to public functionary which had been running for a couple years at that point um and they have like this like back area in like the back of the building and so we we're like okay well this is where we're gonna have to have this event like it's last minute but it's okay um during setup i ended up meeting mike for the first time who owns one is one of the co-owners of public functionary um yeah and in that conversation like we were working around each other he was helping us set up and i learned about public functionary i thought it was really cool and around the time i was still in school um not loving my degree and I really wanted to get more into like event production and curating and things like that, but I didn't know where to start. And from there, after a couple months, he just kind of like kept bringing me on to projects and introduced me to Trisha, who's the like lead art director, also co-founder of Public Functionary um, and curator, lead curator. Um, and that was like almost now, that was first time we met was like three years ago. I started working here technically like that March, 2022 kept just coming up through projects and everything and then here I am now August 2024 almost um and yeah I love it here I, I really do love it here it's just amazing yeah so I'm um going to grad school in New York um and thank you um at the end of August so this is like technically like my last project here which is really nice and really sweet so yeah
Like, back in 2022, especially, and even last year, and Loki even this year, um, a lot of the team is like very, very hardworking, like super hardworking, whether that's people on the event production team, on the like building installation team, on the curating team, on the like events team. And last year in 2022, I was mostly on the events team and we would have like these like large scale parties and like really cool like events and just like everything so often and preparation for those were always like super super intense and low-key really hard but the night of those events were always like really wonderful um i think all the people that i've met through working here has been amazing like i said my undergrad degree was not related to this at all so i think the most satisfying thing is that despite that it was all just like just like chance meetings and chance encounters of like landing me here um i had no idea what curating was i had no idea what public functionary was um i've been an artist my whole life but i never really thought of it as like a potential to pursue and so being surrounded by so many like amazing people who are older than me my age like everything who are doing the work that i want to do or who are really encouraging i think is the most satisfying thing um yeah this is the last thing I'm doing at Public Functionary. I'm actually like leaving in a couple weeks. Actually, it's my, my last time, so yeah. Like I said, it used to be really centered on like, I don't even know if this was really the intention, but we were just doing a lot more like music-based events. Um, we hosted this uh, like collective moonshine last year after they were doing some events at the Cedar in Minneapolis. Um, we had like, playground experience which is a um like a residency like two-week residency hosted by v boem um and we did that last year as well as 2022 it was the first year we did it um and this is the first year we're not doing it actually um so like we used to do a lot more music centered things i know now the transition is going into like exhibitions and like just like you know kind of operating as like a gallery um I do eventually want to like, if that means coming back to public luxury, you know, after school and everything or during like my off seasons, I would love to. Um, so yeah, I know like transitioning to more exhibition stuff, supporting the community, more youth artists is like the, the heart of public luxury. So yeah, I'm excited to share this space with the artists that are exhibiting. Um, like I said, I'm super, just like pleased that I got all of these artists in it. Um, Nafiar Adis is a ceramicist. Their works are not here yet. Um, Barakat is also a good friend of mine who now lives in New York. Um, and then Elsa is a poet. And so I had her poetry printed on some paper. Um, I'm excited for members of my community, like my cultural community to be here. Um, I'm excited to continue this project after this. This has been like a really fun, like, it's been like two years in the making almost, like a year and a half in the making of like coming up with this project. And so I'm excited to continue it afterwards, whether that means like I've been wanting to write a book related to this exhibition. Um, I want to make this exhibition larger in the future. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for whatever else comes after.